Hello guys and welcome back to Motion Recaps. Today we're going to summarize a famous TV show called Squid Game. We'll split this series into three parts, so make sure to check out other parts too and like always, watch out for spoilers. We meet Seong Gi Hun, a man with a gambling addiction. He lives with his mother, and he doesn't have any job. Today is his daughter's birthday. Gi Hun's mother gives him money to buy a gift for his daughter. His daughter leaves with his ex-wife and her husband. Gi Hun waits for his mother to leave the house, and then he takes her credit card. He withdraws money on it, and together with his friend, he goes to gamble office. There he wins a great amount of money. He is full of happiness, and he tips a woman who works there. Everything changes for Gi Hun when debt collectors find him. Gi Hun starts running with his money, but he crashes into one girl. That slows him down, and soon debt collectors catch up to him. Gi Hun says that he has their money because he won it right now, but there is nothing in his pocket. He figures out that the girl from earlier stole it. They beat him up and force him to sign a statement that he doesn't own his body anymore so the debt collectors can harvest organs from him to bring back the money he owes. Now he has no money for his daughter's birthday. However, he remembers that he tipped the worker, and he goes back to her to ask for his money back. She gives it back, and Gi Hun goes to claw machines to get the gift for his daughter's birthday. He plays with Outlock until one kid shows up and helps him. The kid gets him a black box, full of happiness. Gi Hun goes to see his daughter. He doesn't have money for fried chicken and instead, he takes her out on junk food. Then he is disappointed in himself when the daughter opens a box. She finds a lighter in the shape of a gun. He gives her a promise that he will do better for her next birthday. Later that night, he carries her to her home, and then while waiting for the subway, a man in a suit approaches him. The man in a suit asks Gi Hun to play a few games of Didakji with him for money, but because Gi Hun doesn't have any money, the man will slap him instead. Game rules are simple. A throwing player throws his tile so that it makes the other player's paper tile flip over. After a streak of losing, Gi Hun manages to win and take the money. The man says to him that he can earn more money by playing games like this. Also, he knows everything about Gi Hun, and he lets him know that. The man leaves him a business card. Gi Hun is not interested at all, but when he finds out from his mother that his ex-wife will move to the USA with her daughter and new husband, he decides to call the number from the card. He needs money to take custody of his daughter. Gi Hun waits for someone outside when a gray van appears. A driver opens up the door for him. Gi Hun enters and immediately gets sedated. Gi Hun then wakes up in a room full of bunk beds. There are a few hundred people in there with him, and everyone wears the same tracksuit, but with different numbers on their chest. Gi Hun meets an older man with the number one, as he tries to count how many people are here. His name is Oil Nam. Gi Hun tells him that he can see that on a big screen that is hanging on a wall. There are 456 of them. He has a small talk with Il Nam who tells him that he has a brain tumor. We can see that the staff is monitoring everyone. The staff is wearing red uniforms and black masks with a square on them. A man with a special black mask walks in. He is a frontman. It looks like he is in charge. Gi Hun sees a big crowd, and he approaches it. There he sees a man beating a girl. Gi Hun recognizes the girl because she stole his money while he was running from the debt collectors. Her name is Kang Asei Book, and she is an immigrant from North Korea. She is fighting with a gangster named Jang Deok Su. The fight ends when the staff walks in. One man from the staff explains to people that they are players that will participate in six games. Whoever wins will take the prize money. The man shows them a huge transparent piggy bank. The staff will fill it with money after every game. A winner will take all the money. Every single player is in some kind of debt, and every one of them needs money. The man from the staff instructs them to sign a consent form. There are three clauses in there. Number one, a player is not allowed to stop playing. Number two, a player who refuses to play will be eliminated. And number three, games may be terminated if the majority agrees. Everyone signs, and then they follow further instructions. Automatic cameras take pictures of each player. The same pictures are appearing on the floor of the control room. Players then get to a field with nature-like painted walls and an open roof. There Gi Hun sees his childhood friend Cho Sang Woo. Gi Hun is surprised because Cho Sang Woo is a successful person who finished university in Seoul. A female voice gives instructions to players to stand behind a white line. At the end of the field, there is a huge robotic doll with two guards beside her. The female voice tells them that they will play a classical game called Green Light, Red Light. Players who manage to pass a red line before five minutes runs out will win while the others will be eliminated. They can move when the doll says green light, 
and they need to stop moving when it says red light. The game begins, and two players start sprinting. The doll sees one of them, and a loud bang is heard. The player falls to the ground. The other tells him that he can get up now, but blood comes out of eliminated player's mouth. The other starts running and gets shot too. The bunch of players starts panicking and running, and we can see the guns in the walls that are killing them one by one. The frontman watches the show over a TV. A player dies, their picture disappears from the control room floor. The players who survived are strictly following the game rules trying to survive. Ehun is few meters away from the red line, but he trips on a dead body, right in a moment when the doll says red light. Another player named Ollie catches him and saves him. There are only a few seconds left on the timer. Together, they cross the red line winning in the game. Players who didn't manage to cross the line are eliminated in cold blood. Then, we can see they are stuck on an island. The staff is carefully cremating players who got eliminated in the last game while survivors are in the room with bunk beds. They are completely terrified. The screen beeps, and it shows them that more than half got wiped out in the last game. At first, there were 456 players, and now only 201 are left. The staff shows up, and a woman named Han Mai Nayo starts being them to let her go. A lot of other players join her but the man from the staff reminds them that they signed consent and that they cannot leave. He also reminds them that players who refuse to play will be eliminated. Sang Wu reminds the staff that they can leave games if a majority agrees to it. The man from staff informs them that voting will soon begin. But first, he shows them how much money is in the piggy bank after the first game. After seeing the money, a lot of players changes their mind. The voting begins with Gi Hun, and after some time, the votes are a tie. Everything is up to Il Nam. He breaks the tie by giving a vote to terminating the games. That night everyone is returned to Seoul. Gi Hun and Asai Byok are thrown from the van together, and they help each other to untie their arms and legs. The same happens with Ollie and Sang Woo. They are in another part of a town, and Sang Woo shows his generosity to Ollie by giving him money for a bus. Ollie can't thank him enough. Sang Woo turns his phone on, and he sees a lot of messages about the debt he owes. Everyone is looking for him. Tomorrow, Gi Hun goes to the police to tell them what happened but they do not believe him at all. However, a young detective A. Twang Jun Ho is carefully listening to his story. Gi Hun shows the policeman the business card that the man in the subway gave him. The policeman calls the number, but some unknown woman answers it. Gi Hun is in disbelief as he leaves the police station. Jun Ho talks with the policeman, and he gives a good look at the business card. Gi Hun gets home only to find its doors wide open. There is no trace of his mother and he is a little worried about it. He goes to check a market, and he stumbles upon a Sang Woo. He is hiding and watching his mother. Sang Woo tells Gi Hun that she doesn't know about his debts and that she thinks that he is on a business trip. Later they get some coffee, and Sang Woo opens up about his debts. They are so big that police are looking for him. At that moment, Gi Hun gets a phone call from the hospital. He goes there instantly. A doctor tells him that his mother has diabetes and that she needs money for the operation. Jun Ho goes to his missing brother's apartment, where he finds the same business card that he saw the day before. Jun Ho connects the disappearance of his brother with Gi Hun's story. The next day we follow Sae Byok. She visits her little brother in the orphanage. He is crying as he tells her that he misses mom and dad. They are still in North Korea. And later that day, Sae Byok visits a broker. They discuss their parents, and he wants a large sum to get them out. Sae Byok hits him with a teapot threatening him that she will kill him if he screws her over. At that time, Ollie goes to the place where he works. There he asks his boss for a paycheck that he owns to him, but the boss says that he doesn't have money. However, Ollie sees that he is lying, and he tries to get money from him. He lost two fingers while working, and the boss doesn't even care about it. Ollie chases the boss downstairs. While they are fighting, the boss accidentally puts his hand on one of the machines, and it gets compressed. Ollie runs away with the money. Later he gives it to his wife. He tells her to get on the first plane with their baby. Gi Hun asks his friend for money for his mother's hospital bill, but his friend cannot help him. Devastated, he sits in front of one store and drinks. Out of nowhere, Il Nam shows up. He drinks and talks to Gi Hun. The elderly man informs Gi Hun that he will go back into the game tournament because he is dying and his grandkids need money. That night, Sang Wu is lying in a bathtub when he hears a doorbell ringing. He goes to check it out and sees a business card slipped under the door. Deok Su meets up with his gangster friend, only to find out that his friend sold him out. Deok Su is in debt to one gang, and their members ambushed him on a bridge. He stabs his friend to death and then manages to escape by jumping off the bridge. Tomorrow, Yi Hun goes to his ex-wife's house to ask her to borrow some money. She says that she doesn't have any. At that moment, the door opens up, 
and her husband comes in with Gihan's daughter. Gihan leaves immediately. To his surprise, the husband of his ex-wife comes out holding the money. He says to Gihan that he can have the money and that Gihan doesn't have to return it. Instead, he just needs to stop visiting his daughter. She will move to the USA, and it would be better for her to forget Gihan. Gihan punches him and refuses to take the money. That night Junho goes to Gihan's house. He finds him in front of it. Junho introduced himself. He asks Gihan about the tournament, but Gihan tells him that he can't help him. Gihan goes to his house, and he finds a business card stuck in his door. Most players are waiting for vans to return to the tournament. They are desperate for money. Junho is carefully tailing one van. In one of the vans, Sae Byok is lying with a covered mouth and nose, avoiding sedation. Junho stops following the van when it stops in a harbor with other vans. He quickly gets under the one van and patiently waits for it to get on a ferry. The staff scans unconscious players, revealing that every one of them has implanted a chip somewhere. Junho tricks one member of the staff, and he quickly knocks him out. Junho takes his uniform. After the other staff members pass, Junho puts his ID into the pocket of the unconscious man. Then he throws him off the ferry. One of the staff approaches Junho to check on him. Junho realizes that this man is his superior. He also figures out that the shapes on their masks symbolize their ranks. Junho manages to get away with an excuse that is seasick. The ferry gets to an island, and then we can see the staff dressing players and sealing their belongings. Their SAE Byok manages to steal a knife from one staff member. The next morning Gihan and Il Nam find each other. They talk a little before Sun Wu and Ali join them. After some nice conversation, they decide to form a team to increase their chances of winning. Gyok Su is also forming his team, and he asks Sae Byok to join, but she refuses. Then a woman named Han Mai Nayo asks Gyok Su if she can join his team, but he refuses and insults her badly. Later, undercover Jun Ho goes to his room by order of superiors, and there he finds a camera. The staff is monitoring everyone. That night Mai Nayo bangs on the door and demands from the guard to let her go to the bathroom. Sae Byok being cunning as usual uses a chance to go together with Mai Nayo. It turns around that Mai Nayo smuggled cigarettes somehow. Sae Byok gets inside of Mai Nayo's stall and unscrews the entrance of a vent with the knife she stole earlier. After some crawling, Sae Byok sees a staff melting sugar in the kitchen. The next morning, the staff gives breakfast to the players. While eating, the Gihan's team is having a conversation and they are getting closer. Only Sang Wu is acting cold and strange. He needs money, and he is ready to win this tournament, even if he needs to screw his friends over. The next game is announced. While moving to the next location, Sung Wu asks Sae Byok what she saw last night. She says to him that the staff was boiling sugar. They get to the playground-themed room. Sung Wu sees a few shapes on the wall, and he figures out what the game is. It's a game where you need to break honeycomb candy in a certain shape. He doesn't inform his teammates about it, and when staff tells them to chose, he chooses the triangle. Poor Gihan chooses the umbrella, and he knows that he is screwed when he sees candy and a needle. Sae Byok gets a triangle, Ollie gets a circle, but Il Nam, Mai Nayo, and Diaksu get a star. The game starts. The staff is watching everyone, and they have their guns ready. Sae Byok, Sung Woo, and Ali manage to break their shapes. One man breaks his candy, and the staff member shoots him mercilessly. Then other staff members begin to execute other players who failed. Mai Nayo uses the situation to cheat with her lighter. She is heating the needle, making the job easier. After she finishes, she gives her lighter to Diaksu. She wants to get to his team no matter what. Gihan gets an idea to lick the other side of candy and to make it thinner. Il Nam and the others are doing the same thing as him. Gihan and Il Nam manage to cut their shapes in the last moment before the timer runs out. The staff is executing everyone who didn't manage to cut the shape. Jun Ho watches everything, and he is shocked. His superior tells him to help others with picking up the bodies and then to visit him. One of the men who lost in the game manages to overpower a staff member. He takes his gun and shoots another staff member with a cube on his mask. Then he takes that staff member hostage, and he tells him to remove his mask. The man sees that the staff member is only a teenager, and he shoots himself. The frontman comes in, and he shoots an unmasked teenager. He reminds the other staff members that they will be killed if someone sees their faces. Jun Ho uses a chance to take a mask from the dead staff member. Now he has a higher rank. And that's it for today's video. If you had a good time watching it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more interesting movie recaps.